So we have air at a given pressure and temperature at the start of the compression stroke. So that's P1 and T1. It's an air standard diesel cycle. Good. Its compression ratio is 20 or 20 to 1. They'll say something like that. And the cutoff ratio is 2.2. Uh, now, accounting for variable specific heats using table A22, solve this problem. So what is the temperature at the end of the compression stroke? Again, in the previous slide, we did the TS diagram, the PV diagram, and uh, so we did the first law, second law for all of these processes. So best thing I can do is think about trying to organize work in a table for properties. So here's different state, state one, two, three, four. We're going to talk about the pressure in kilopascal, the temperature in Kelvin, and I'll put another column out there in a minute. But this is the core. We're trying to populate it. So it starts at 98 kilopascal and 310 Kelvin. Now, if I want to do a variable specific heat compression, then I remember out of chapter six for an ideal gas in the air table that there's something like um, the V2 divided by V1 is equal to this V sub uh, 2R divided by V sub 1R. What's this subscript R on this V? Pardon? I'm sorry? Reduced, not really, kind of a relative, but it's in the table A22. I don't know if I have table A22 on the next slide. But um, in table A22, you have a, te a temperature column, you have internal energy, you have enthalpy. Then they say something special, or maybe they also have S0. I'm trying to remember S0. Then they have P sub R and V sub R. And this, they say, is only with S equal to a constant. You only use those two columns if you're going for an isentropic process. And you use this V sub R if you know the volume ratio for the isentropic process. That's great for the auto and diesel. Next, we're going to get to the Brayton. And the Brayton uses pressures, talks about pressure. So... Think about that. Maybe I'll just put it up here. Brayton will use the piece of ours a lot, and the auto and the diesel will use the piece of ours a lot. So what we're doing is we say, you know what? I need to go and look up another V sub R column, and I need to look it up at 310 Kelvin because everything come down here to 310. Don't look up, you, you can look at what U is and H is and S naught is, but really what I want is that V sub R. So let me get my appendix. So V sub R is 572.3 at this temperature of 310 Kelvin. Yes, sir. We're going to use them, but we want to, yeah, we'll get it. Put it. Go ahead and put them in there. And so let's go ahead and put the U, get that value, write it down. What is it? Uh, 221.25 and the H, the 310.24. Okay. But this is the hard part, the V sub R. So now what we do is we put... The V sub R at state 2 is equal to the V sub R at state 1 times the, the actual V without a subscript R at state uh, 2 divided by V sub 1. And so what I need to do is I'm going to calculate V sub R at state 2 and put it right there. All right? Okay, so let's do this. This will be uh, 572.3 times what is my compression ratio? V sub 2 divided by V sub 1, 1 over 20. Somebody have a calculator? Want to run that for me? 28.615. All right, 28.615. You have to go back to the table A22, I don't have it on my screen, so I'll switch to the dot camera. 
All right. So let me do this. Let me see if I have it on the next slide. Do I have it on the next slide? Yeah, 28.615. Using that V sub R at 28.615, I find out that the temperature is, doing an interpolation, 957.6. So this is a temperature. So you interpolate to get the temperature. You interpolate to get U. You interpolate to get H. All right. Uh, this is just extra noise. Basically, it's proving that the table is good. Okay, in in the calculations. All right, <clears throat> so how do I get this pressure at state 2? How do you get the pressure at state 2? 6055. couple ways to doing it. Um, let me come back here. Is the ideal gas equation always valid? It is always valid. So we have that the P2 uh, V2 divided by T2 is equal to the gas constant, which is P1 V1 divided by T1. It's like I know T1, P1. Um, I know the ratio of, put, put this over here. What is that ratio? The compression ratio, 20. Okay, and I know T2, I just calculated, the only thing I know, don't know in that equation is P2. Okay, so I know I'm jumping back and forth, but I'm going to jump over here, and that's how you calculate this pressure. Now, during the process, 2 to 3, why is P3 equal to P2? That's the assumption about the diesel cycle. All right, how do I get this T3? How do I get that temperature at state 3? Maybe I should pause and let you think about it. How do you, once I get the, this pressure and I have the temperature here, how do I get this temperature right here? T3. Should I pause or not? Vote. Pause. Let me think about it. Blow through it, Professor. The people who are in charge, they want to blow through. All right, so we don't forget that it's the ideal gas equation is always valid. So we've got that P2 uh, V2 divided by T2 is equal to P3 V3 divided by T3. Hey, that looks like this equation. Yep, sure does. Right? And then what do we have is we put the, let me do this, put V2 over here. What is that ratio? Cutoff ratio, exactly. And then we had P2 is equal to P3, isn't it? And so the T3 is equal to T2 uh, times the cutoff ratio. Professor, why didn't you just tell me that? I can memorize it for the exams. Don't memorize stuff like that for the exams. Did I do that right? So you take this, multiply by 2.2 is the cutoff ratio from T2 to T3. Does that work? Take 957.6, multiply by 2.2. Does that come out around 2107? Yeah. All right. Now, once I have this temperature, I go to the table and I can get my U and my H. But I have to interpolate. <laughs> table A22. When you use variable specific heats, you have to do a lot of interpolation. Professor, on an exam, will we have to do the interpolation? If you if you tell me I have to use variable specific heats. Yes. Professor, that seems like then I'll spend a lot of time interpolating in the tables. Yes. Professor, if you tell me I need to use the cold air standard analysis, and you give me the C sub P and C sub B and K, then I'm not going to have to interpolate in the tables, correct? Yeah, that's right. That means I could probably solve the problem faster. You're absolutely right. That's why I'd probably prefer to give you a cold air standard analysis problem on an exam. 
But you know how many times, what percent of the class, like this, I'll say, cold air standard analysis, shout at the top of my lungs, and off they go, flaming in the a table A22, and doing 10 or 20 interpolations on a 50-minute exam. So read the problem carefully. You may save yourself a lot of interpolation if you can do cold air. Yes, sir. It, I'll either say variable, account for variable specific heats or use cold air. What about from 3 to 4? Hey, 1 to 2 was S equal to a constant. What's 3 to 4? S equal to a constant. It's the same thing. What you do now is that you know the temperature here. You have to get the interpolation to get this B sub R. But you don't do the um, whole expansion. It's like uh, you're going from, uh, uh, from a, if this is a 20 compression and a 2.2 expansion right there, then this expansion out is a ratio of 20 divided by 2.2. It's not as much as 20. It's not the same as the compression ratio. It's this one. It's, it's like 20 divided by 2.2. Or work it out slowly. You want to go V... Um, um, 4 divided by V3. Isn't that equal to V4 divided by V3? Yes. Well, stuff in there, uh, V, uh, put in V2 and V2. So what is this? This is R, and this is 1 over R sub C. Okay, anyway, you get V sub R, and then you're going to take it and multiply it by R divided by R sub C to get here, and now do the interpolation to get the temperature, to get the internal energy, enthalpy. How do I get the pressure? Same way you got the pressure for P2, knowing the temperature at state 4. It's like I've done this. It's the same process going from 3 to 4. It's simply you don't have the same uh, compression ratio or expansion ratio. All right. Once I have all of these, then I have to go in and get the works. The work for process 1 to 2, isn't that a change in the U's? Yeah, so we're going to use this. Okay, how about the heat transfer for 2 to 3? Change in the H's. How about the work from 2 to 3? Oh, that, shouldn't that be 0? No, it's boundary work, constant pressure. This one is P times V3 minus V2. That's probably why I put this extra column in there, the V column. And this V column is always uh, V is equal to um, RT divided by P. Hey, professor, is that R bar or not? All right, there's a few uh, unit conversions which are really, really handy. Sometimes they're not as emphasized enough in the textbook. But um, let me just scroll right here. So, so a lot of you said uh, this R is equal to kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. You're correct. But when you are using this in an equation like... Uh, you want to calculate the specific volume, so you put RT divided by P. What are the uh, preferred units of the pressure? Kilopascal. Preferred units of the temperature? Kelvin. Uh, what would be the preferred units for the specific volume? Meter cubed per kilogram, right? And so it would really be nice if you had something for the R, which was just looking at it, meters cubed per kilogram, Kelvin, and then uh, um, I got to think about this. It's kilopascal right there. Yeah, I mean, that would be the nice set of units to make this thing work. So you remember a number of things like, uh, let's see, is a joule a newton meter? Yeah, that's true. Put a kilo there and let the kilo go for the ride. Just put the kilo over here. Fine. All right. Okay. If I multiply by a meter squared and I divide by a meter squared, did I change anything? No. Okay. Is a newton per meter squared, what is that? 
pascal. So let's put the kilo in front of that pascal. So I have that a kilojoule is equal to a kilo pascal. What do I have left over for the... I have left over... Meter cube. Is it right that one kilojoule is a kilopascal times meter cubed? That's really kind of convenient. And I know that it's in the textbook someplace, but I can't remember exactly where. But we use it all the time in Thermo 1 and in Thermo 2. It's in the front pages somewhere? Well, I can't lay my finger on it, sorry. So, all right. So now, if you wanted to, you can easily calculate this answer here. And you find out it's a kilojoules per kilogram. And the unit conversion works pretty easy. All right. We then do the sum, Q net, work net. They work. You want to get the efficiency. Isn't it 800.1 divided by what you have to pump in, 1388.7? You use the table just to get the properties. Table A22. Once you have all those properties, it's everything's the same in the rest of the calculation. Um, and then uh, if you compare it with the cold air, you do not get the same. They are not the same. That simple equation for the cold air analysis, thermal efficiency is not the same. Um, the mean effective pressure was asked for. You calculate that. I think there's some other things that were asked for that we calculate. They're all answered here. Any comments or questions? Let's press forward.